All right, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to show you how to rotate text today uh, for the purpose of uh, doing extrude cut with your initials, um, some sort of identification onto your parts for the uh, puzzle project. And um, yesterday in class, we kind of went over briefly how to um, add text. And this is more along the lines of a, um, a horizontal type of alignment. And uh, the question came up with how, was how to rotate the actual text. And um, unlike SolidWorks, it's a little bit more uh, deeper in terms of how to do it. It's not as uh, obvious. And so I want to make this video here to kind of help you rotate the text. So as you can see, I have my last name here. Um, and that was done in class. And that was pretty self-explanatory. I'll go over that in just a minute. Um, but then, like, how did I create the angled text here. So um, I'm going to obviously do this organically. Again, I'm not just going to kind of open up the sketches that already exist. Um, once again though, this is for the puzzle project. And so what I'm looking for you to do is to add some sort of um, symbols that face other surfaces to help give the person who builds the puzzle um, a clue as to how to assemble it in addition to um, adding your specific identifiers such as your initials or last name or first name on all of the pieces because we're going to be 3D printing these and they're all going to basically look the same when I print them in batches. So uh, this will help and because we're using the photopolymer printer um, the quality will uh, present itself and these um, the text details will resolve and it'll look perfectly clear. So we should take advantage of the fact that we have this type of printer and um, this will give us an added benefit versus if we were using maybe our FDM MakerBot or any of the Prusa printers. Um, they don't have the resolution that this photopolymer printer has. So uh, anyway, I digress. So as you can see, I have test and I have the word truss on one of these pieces. I'm going to add um, another name let's go to the L part here okay and the way I have it oriented here is with this surface facing up that short end of the L facing backwards um, so if I go over to here it's kind of the orientation that you can see okay it's very similar to the way that it is assembled the way that it's lying down so here's our front and here's our right and here's our top so the first thing you want to do is obviously create a sketch on the surface that you are going to write on. So we're going to click sketch and if I wanted to write on this surface or this surface I would select it. I want to select the top for my specific scenario. As you can see sketch plane 2 is now present. We are creating geometry on this uh, planar surface. Um, at this point what we did yesterday, just to record this, is we're going to create a, um, a construction line that's not really snapped to any particular location um, other than the fact that it is on the edges of the part. I did not snap, if you noticed, I did not snap to the exact center of this surface because if I did, I wouldn't be able to dimension it off. So we're trying to avoid snapping to centers unless we intentionally need them to stay on the center. Um, I can put up a dimension line, or I mean a dimension call out so that we can control the position of this line. And then we are going to right click on this, um, shut off our dimension tool, right click on the line that we created and switch it to construction because this is not model geometry. It's going to guide our sketch, which will have text on it. So this is identical to SolidWorks at this point. This is where it starts to differ a little bit. So we click the A which is the note tool. This one's called the text tool. We're going to select the line itself and then click and drag. So now you're kind of making a text box for where the text is going to appear. Uh, that's, that's a little bit different from SolidWorks. So if you have that background, you'll notice this is a difference. Um, and then I'm going to add my last name as well. I'm going to put it all in caps. Since we are 3D printing this and it's going to be a, a, an empty cavity, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's bold it. Um, I'm going to say okay and let's just kind of see what we have here. It doesn't give you a preview unfortunately um, right off the bat. 
And then you can actually click and drag this text box, which will affect your height. So if you wanted a specific height of text, um, you could grab your dimension tool and dimension the text box and say, I need my text to be exactly a quarter of an inch tall, and it will actually affect that. If, if height wasn't a consideration um, and length was, you could then call out the length of your text string, if we call it that, and say, I need it to be exactly 1.5 inches. And then based on, obviously, the proportions of width to height when it comes to your font, it'll grow up proportionately. So we've done this already, okay? Um, now the question is, like, how do I angle this? Because I can leave it the way it is, and I can extrude cut it. I can extrude remove material, um, and it would obviously show just like the other part that I showed in the beginning of the video. But the aspect of rotating the actual text is a little bit subtle, um, and there may be a better way of doing this, but this is what I've discovered yesterday through um, just digging through some of the forums and the chats. And what we do is, you have a text box that you can see here. We're going to leave that one there. I'm going to delete my guiding line. Okay, now this, this text box is kind of free to float around um, vertically and horizontally, but they're locked. I can't move them in combination, so I can move it horizontally, and then I can move it vertically and so forth, but everything is perpendicular. So the question is, how do we um, rotate the part or the sketch? So first thing, it looked as if in the, um, the chats, it says dimension one point. So I'm going to click this one point and this edge and say, okay, that point is that far away from the edge. Whatever it is, it is at the moment. Then I'm going to say this point to the bottom edge, and I'm going to drop that dimension there. So now I actually have one point fixed in location. I could change these two values, the X and Y, and it would move this point. Um, I'm going to shut off my dimension tool at this point, and I'm going to click on the actual sketch itself. And I'm looking for a specific symbol. If you can see this horizontal arrangement, right? the relationship currently that it's kind of constrained to is it's horizontal. So when you put your mouse over onto something and then click it, pay attention to symbols. There it is again. And if you right click on it, you could delete the entity, okay? So we don't want to delete it, but we want to single click it. It should turn orange or yellow, as you can see here. I'm going to press delete on the keyboard. I just deleted that relationship for it being horizontal. Um, I'm going to click on it again, and I'm just going to see if there's any additional relationship boxes that pop up. And I don't see any. So now, because one point is fixed, and I deleted my relationship, I should be able to kind of click and drag and rotate it around this point. So that's one of the ways that you can do this. Now, if you needed it to be at a specific angle, let's go one step further. I don't know if this works. I haven't tested this out. I'm going to draw a horizontal line. As you can see, there's the horizontal relationship. And then I'm going to switch to construction just like I did before. And then, so the horizontal line doesn't move in any particular point, I'm just going to leave that number here. I guess I didn't need that, so let's just get rid of it. Um, and now I'm going to pull up an angle. So I'm going to use the dimension tool, and I'm going to click the line of my text, and then I'm going to click this construction line, and now I have an angle. And if I, ne I need it exactly at 45 degrees, I could specify and there I have it. So I assumed that this would work. I wasn't entirely sure. Um, obviously 45 degrees wasn't necessary and um, I obviously could change this to any degree I want. Let's say uh, 15 degrees so it's on the part itself. For this specific project I think this is a little overkill to specify the angle of which your text is rotated. However, if you want them to look consistent, you have a constant number, and you could say, I need my text at an angle of 15 degrees on every single part. This is how you would do it. Um, another thing is I could change this, 0.25. I could move it up. Right? I could, let's go to an eighth of an inch, 0.125. I could move it down. I can move this to half an inch off the edge of the part. Um, 
quarter of an inch off the edge of the part. As you can see, we can move these dimensions. So there you have it. There's your rotate text. There's your control in terms of controlling how tall your text could be, how wide your text could be, and um, where to move your text on an X, Y with relation to one point. Deleting these horizontal relations if you don't want them. So if I click on this, you can see there's a horizontal relation. I want that there. But if I click on this line, I don't see any relation. Right? There's no little square with a symbol that shows that it's horizontal. So that was the key of deleting a relation. All right. Um, so when I click this, I then could press delete on the keyboard. It would go away, and then this this would no longer be locked into a horizontal position. Of course, right now I want all of what I have. I'm going to say OK. My sketch is drawn. Only thing that's not construction lines would obviously be the letters. Um, I'm going to select sketch 2. I'm going to click extrude. I'm going to select remove. And we're going to do a 32nd of an inch. Uh, 1 over 32. So we don't need to type the decimal in. This is rounded up. It goes beyond that in terms of the actual decimal. We're going to select remove. And then we're going to say OK. So at this point, this part has already been updated. So if I ever go over to the assembly, you can see that my pieces here have them. As you can see, I have two duplicate pieces. This isn't exactly the way I want my puzzle assembled. As you can see here, I have a cubic void. And I don't really want to make a tiny little cube that fits in here. I mean, I could. Um, it's probably easily lost if we put it in a bag and give it to somebody. So it's probably not the best way to assemble this puzzle. Um, but I kind of use this assembly environment as an example of how to do stuff throughout the, um, this project. And so at this point, the reason why I'm recording this video was for the fact I wanted to show you how to create angled text. And the angled text obviously should lend itself to um, giving you some creative control. Now once again, a surface facing a surface, once you have your puzzle solved, once you know that you have the cube the way that you would like it, I want you to consider what's considered front, right, and top of the assembled puzzle itself, but more or less, what is the front, top, and side of your parts here? Right? So if that's the front, we know that that's the front. If I need to put a symbol on this part, let's say a triangle or a square or a plus sign or some custom shape, and then extrude it like I did with my letters, that would lend itself to facing a specific direction here. It would actually face up the way it was oriented here. This would face out. So looking at your pieces, you want to consider what pieces touch what other pieces, and then you could maybe put a circle on all the surfaces that need to touch each other, right? Cir circle facing circle, triangle facing triangle, square facing square. And these would be little subtle symbols that would lend itself to a solution if the person playing your puzzle or solving your puzzle um, were to look at the pieces and analyze them. So there would be clues to how to solve the puzzle rather than just geometric um, relations of fitting things together to make the cube. So I'd like you to do that as well. I think it's a little bit of an addition to this project that I've done in the past. And honestly, because we have the photopolymer printer, we're able to do this um, and we're able to add this level of detail. I'm going to print some of these sample pieces out so that you can obviously see the quality of the, uh, the print so that you can go forward with confidence. Um, this video has now gone about 14 minutes, so I'm going to wrap this up at this point. If you have any questions, you can obviously leave them in the comments if you aren't in class. Um, if you are in class, obviously you can email me, ask me direct, or um, go to Google Cl uh, Classroom and leave a comment. Hope this was informative.